Currently 2,000 kilometers in a two-day drive up north here to the Boreal Forest of Northern Ontario. I'm here with my buddy John from the Lost Lakes channel. And we're here at St. Raphael Signature Site Provincial Park. And over the next two weeks and 200 kilometers, we're getting into some big lake paddling, a bit of whitewater canoeing, fishing, and hopefully seeing some wildlife. The forecast for this trip is looking really, really bad. So bad, it's kind of as if, it's kind of as if a million monkeys on a million keyboards stop attempting to write Shakespeare and just start flinging poo at each other. That's how bad the weather forecast is. But hey, we're out here anyway, so we might as well have some fun. Oh, no. Whoa! Piker. Piker start off. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. He's amazing. So my goals for this trip, catch a pike, catch a walleye, see a woodland caribou. That would be quite lucky. I'd be happy with any one of those though. But all three, triple threat, triple whammy, would be awesome. John's blessing my, my lures right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Whoa! Right into the basket. Oh. This is probably why you go barbless. Yeah, it's like in his eyeball. In his eyeball? Yeah, I think so. Oh, we gotta keep it then? Yeah, we'll keep her. Yeah. Looks like a pretty meaty one. I'm so sorry, but thank you, my friend. Yeah, look at this big boy. It's uh, I accidentally knocked it earlier, but I think it's definitely a baletti. It is definitely a baletti. I shouldn't be doing this right now. Cut in right behind the head on top, and then just follow the top of the spine. Again, that's just the swim bladder burping air out. It's not the fish is dead, but yeah. this line of bones. Yeah. So unfortunately, you have to cut on the outside, and then that meat in here, you could use it for like a, a soup or something. But uh, yeah, for a fillet, it just doesn't work, unfortunately. So all this is unfortunately the. Y bone infested meat. It's got Ooh. a pretty good sized fish in its oh, intestines that, here. Eh? That it what swallowed that? that whole thing. Yeah, it's a good little meal, eh? Ooh, might be uh, Cisco, that? like herring. Yeah, to avoid dirtying a dish, I just season as I'm like putting it in. <laughs> oh, get everything in. Oh, what a way to start a trip. <laughs> That's delicious, dude. That's good. I like the way you battered it in the pan. It's just cleaner, like, and it's still plenty of, there's plenty of, like, batter flavor on it. Yeah. No, I'm, it's good. You cooked it well, you flayed it well. It doesn't taste fishy at all. You'd think that you'd want that because it's a fish. <laughs> I know, no one's ever said, like, I don't want my steak to taste beefy. Have you ever heard of a gooey duck? 14 days. Couldn't ask for much more to start. Can't believe after all that driving and all that prep work, we're finally out here. First day is done. It was a good one. Got a big day tomorrow. We're gonna try to push as far as we can because in two days time, we got some pretty strong headwinds. So yeah, we're gonna wanna make some ground. Anyways, good night. Micromanager fire. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't care. So what happened yesterday with the pike? Um, one of the hooks got him in the mouth, and then the second hook just whipped around, got him in the eye. So the plan is to take the front hook out. So there's only ever a chance of me hooking the fish with one hook. So it doesn't lead to stray hooks catching where I don't want them to. It'll make it easier for catch and release. It'll also make it easier for me to get the hook out. Boom. Hear that? John thinks I'm a good man. I didn't necessarily say that. I burnt the, the oats. 
And then I added some water to try to mitigate that burntness, but it's too late. It's really bad. It's a beautiful morning. It's around 8.30. Today is the kind of day where we want to push as far as we can because the next two days it's going to be a lot of headwinds. We've got a 700 meter portage coming up immediately, a smaller one a bit later in the day, and we're going to want to push it as far as we can on this big lake. Yeah. Hooks out. Look at that. Hooks out? See that? Oh. Isn't that awesome. beautiful? <gasps> oh. That's a good feeling, right? Yeah, that's a good feeling. Right on, man. Is that good? Yeah. He's like, I'm free. You're free, buddy. First portage of the trip, 750, 700 meters. There he goes. There he goes again. Woo! Beauty. Thanks, buddy. Later. Lunch break here on this little island campsite. <laughs> and we got John over here. We don't do that city boy stuff. It's the northern way. Mm -hmm. Me and John both woke up this morning and we were talking about how last night was either one of the best sleeps of our lives or, you know, at least the best sleep in a long time. This is the first time we both brought out our negative 10 and negative 20 sleeping bags. I'm not sure if it was like the, the down, like the extra downfill, or maybe it was John's loving embrace, but we both slept um, pretty damn well last night. So we're just finishing up Dillisep Lake. We've had a nice tailwind for a little bit. It's 3 p.m. We're covering ground, but the scope and the scale of this trip is really starting to sink in. These lakes are really large, many days and many kilometers ahead. Come to daddy. No, it's Pike. Oh, and he spit it out too. Nice. What a wonderful thing to have. I love that. Look at that, right out of his mouth. Little pike. All right, buddy. May you live a long and wonderful life. <laughs> uh, we're heading back down south west right now, and we're getting our first taste of headwinds and a little bit of foreshadowing for what the trip is going to be like. But hey, we're still moving forward, so not all that bad. Put it in my head, damn it. Uh, it's better than Cotton Eye Joe being in your head. <laughs> okay, what have you done? <laughs> the best parts of the day, taking off the wet water shoes, putting on dry socks and dry Crocs. So the plan was to do polenta for this trip, but I couldn't find any polenta in the supermarket. But I learned that cornmeal is the same as polenta, except for polenta is like a coarser grain and cornmeal is a finer grain. So this is like a coarse grain cornmeal. Um, the issue is there's no instructions on how much water to mix with it. So it's a little bit of an experiment. I got a bunch here. I, like, I, I don't know, oh, yeah. this is all, I'm just winging this whole thing. Parmesan cheese and some dehydrated Alfredo sauce. Hopefully that like incorporates somehow. Kind of a lot of food. It's not so too basically like heat up. Those are good enough. Yep. Good enough for me. Ooh, okay. All right. Camping food. <laughs> what a great little day we had today. Went by fast, went by really, really fast kind of leads me to believe that this trip is gonna go by in a blank. We pushed it really as far as we could today. And we were hoping to get further because this lake is huge and there's a high potential for headwinds tomorrow. But we did as well as we could. Found a nice little campsite here on this island. And we'll just do what we can tomorrow. Weather predictions are never 100% accurate, so. Fingers crossed.
So the weather's kind of been pushed back a little bit, so we have a little bit of a clearing today. Still headwinds, but not as intense as we were expecting. Still chances of rain. We're gonna pack up and get on out and see how far we can get today. Essentially every morning I'm having coffee and steel cut oats with cranberries or berries. This is so much better than John's breakfast burrito. Oh my God. Looks pretty bomb. It's pretty good. Little cup of Joe in the morning. It's John. Oh, a cup of John. So it's that time in the morning after you've finished your bucket of coffee. It's now time to take a number two in the woods. So I got a quick one for you guys today. As you're selecting your spot to take your number two, make sure you test the ground to find what's the most comfortable position for your feet because there's nothing worse than after you dig your hole and you go to take your number two, that one foot is above the other. You're all twisted and uncomfortable. So you can't really enjoy that wooded uh, pooping experience. Make sure you find nice even footing, then dig your hole six inches, then do your work. Hope you guys enjoyed those poop tips. If you did, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe for more poop tips in the future. Feels good to be done. One of the biggest sections of the lake. This water's cold, it's really cold. We're as far north as the southern portion of James Bay right now. This is just about as far north as I've ever been, in Ontario at least. Pretty cool. Pardon me? You gonna eat that? <laughs> yeah, I might. <laughs> you keep that wandering eye over there. Much better. Beauty. Yeah, good size. First set of rapids coming up. We just finished Minnis Lake. We're gonna scout this one out, see if we can run it. Left of this rock, up the middle. Looks like a pretty standard class one, class two, class 1.5. So we can run it. Good stuff. Oh yeah. First wally. Nice. Woo! Awesome. Nice. 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 First walleye of the trip. Second walleye of my life. Whoa! What a beauty. What a beauty. Look at that thing. Wow. That walleye was such a beautiful fish. Sure, let's eat, let's eat one. Got you a present. What'd you get me? Still need a bonker. Oh, you got a bonker, eh? Just a couple of rocks. Oh. Let's see any good sticks. <laughs> We're doing it the savage way. Oh, okay. That's a that bonker. A crushing skull. Wow. <laughs> that fish was so pretty. Yeah, man. They are beautiful. Why is it always the pretty ones you want to eat? <laughs> fish. Woman, so happy I caught a walleye. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and another rocket. Ooh, yeah, that's he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Awesome. Oh, that's inside out. Almost botched it. This is a keeper too. Oh, and then the hook just came back. You got it? Yeah, got it. You got dinner, buddy. Nice. We're at the second set of rapids of three and there's no portage. So it's either a run, line, or you know, figure something out.
Yeah, it looks pretty bad. The flow will most likely want to take us into this sweeper here on river left where we want to come to the inside. I think it's just a little bit sketchy to do, to be honest. I think we line. I think that's the play. I think we get going. Yeah. yeah it's definitely dark and there's thunder, so. Nice dark. Yeah. No, yeah, you saw lightning? Oh, yeah. John's wearing a dry suit, so he's impenetrable to all things wet except for his own moisture coming off his body. Things are pretty sweet, kind of like bulletproof in some ways. Goodbye. Oh, look at that, some wood. Wow, this place is... Beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Got uh, two fillets, the wings, and one scallop. I don't know where the other one went. Oh, do you see that? That was sweet. It'll even light stuff this wet, eh? Well, we'll see, right? Seems like it's gone. It does, yeah. <laughs> Just changed into some dry clothes, and my, oh my, does it ever feel good. All right, here we go. Yeah. 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 Does that do it? Oh. Okay. 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 Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, man. Here is some lasagna that we're gonna see if I guess the water amount right. If not, it's gonna be soupy. It's a little soupy. Mmm. My compliments to the chef. President's choice. Yeah. <laughs> Great little day we had today. Those headwinds that we were expecting since the beginning weren't as bad as we, as we thought. What a pleasant surprise. Caught three walleye today. That's four walleye I've caught in my entire life. Fun little day we had. Good day. And I'll see you guys in the morning.
Yesterday the seal cutouts were pretty boring by themselves, so today I'm gonna spice it up a little bit with some a little bit of special something. It's caribou. Oh my goodness. Good eye. That's great. I didn't think that was going to happen. And you've never seen one? I've never seen one before. Yeah. <laughs> that was electrifying. It's amazing, man. Oh my god, man. Yes. Oh, I'm just like, yes. on. Good eyes, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still pretty boring, even with the dino eggs. It did give it an unnaturally green hue to it. <laughs> Coming up on our first set of three rapids for the day. This one's a C1. Hopefully the water levels are high enough for us to run it without getting wet because it's a little chilly today. Seems like a pretty straightforward C1. Still don't feel like getting wet though, so. We stay to the left side and then through the middle. This transparent, sparkly paddle tail. Oh! Fish on! Oh my god! Oh my god! That's a big boy! Woo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, I hope I got that on camera because that thing was enormous. That was my biggest pike. That was nice. That was, uh... That was probably seven, seven plus pounds. Yeah, hopefully I got it that. It like it from afar. Sweet. Nice fish, man. Biggest pike I've ever caught. John says it's around seven pounds. I... God, I don't even know. That was, uh... One experience. Nice. Enjoying those tailwinds today, but we reached the most northern point of our canoe route. After the next side of rapids is where the Minas River, which we're currently on, meets up with the St. Raphael River, at which point we will be heading south with headwinds all the way for the next few days. This all seems pretty straightforward. Scratching the surface back there Ooh. so much. Gonna hoard a little with this monsoon coming to.
We're gonna see if we can push a little further, but the winds are very much not in our favor, so much so that it's just not worth it. We're not covering any ground, but we're gonna turn this corner, which will put us onto St. Raphael uh, River, and hopefully we will get some relief from the winds. And if we can make it further, we're gonna try to make it further. If not, we're gonna set up camp and post up. We gave it another go, but boy, that wind is strong and it takes a lot out of us. So there's a little bit of relief right here at the side of the lake. Let's hope it's as good of a campsite as the ones we were just at. If not, we've made a grave mistake. <laughs> Can't pour. John's just setting up his hammock behind me and I'm exploring the woods and I found some Falchon trails. And Falchon trails are different from true Shawn trails because Falchon trails have true gills where true Shawn trails have false gills. Do your own research, ladies and gentlemen. And never eat wild mushrooms. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, it's literally a rocking crib. I'm sorry I farted in here. I was like... He farted in my hammock. I, it was just His not... His fecal matter is splattered all over my pad. <laughs> it's like aerosolized fecal matter. You invite me to try your hammock. Actually, you didn't invite me. I said, I should try your hammock now. <laughs> I come in and I fart in it. <laughs> I'm a class act. Oh, this is good. Hella cool. Oh, the little guy. Walleye. <laughs> walleye? It's gotta be a walleye. Yeah. The hardest part is always filleting the fish, and it took me about 10 minutes, so that's pretty awesome. I mean, overall, like, it wasn't that hard to pull this thing from the water, fillet it up, and cook it. Sometimes it could be a drag because I'm quite an amateur when it comes to fishing, but the more I practice, the better I get, and the more I can do it, and the more fish I can eat, and the longer I can stay out here. Plus, it is like the tastiest thing, eating a fish that you just caught from the... Less talk, more eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good day, John. Best day yet. Yeah. Caribou makes it. That was this morning. Seems like forever ago. It's weird. Mac and cheese. But not really. Little El Dante. El Dante. Tea bag in the teacup. Xander is making tea with his mac and cheese water. Anyways. Boom. You can't go wrong with that. It was so good. Awesome day. Woke up, saw uh, caribou. We're going to have some rough days in the future. Two days from now. We're supposed to have an absolute torrential downpour. Basically a monsoon, it looks like, from the forecast that we got on our GPSs. Next two days, headwinds we're gonna battle, but nothing compares to three days time. Mmm, noodle water tea. Just after 7.30, we're getting to bed. We're both pretty tired. Didn't make it as far as we were hoping to today, so tomorrow we're gonna try to beat the headwinds by waking up at 4 a.m getting a nice early start on the day because those headwinds today kicked our ass and we want to get the better of them tomorrow so good night everyone oh. 4 a.m.
weight on this fish. Oh! oh that? Big jump from the pike. It's a nice eater. Yes! We're eating tonight, my friends. Wow. Eating tonight. So. Look at all that meat. Those are huge. Yeah, it's a lot of meat. I've never eaten pike eggs. You want to try? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. John just prepped us a charcuterie board full of fish. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Wow, that looks like some delicious pike. And we decided we're going to eat the fish roe. It's the fish eggs. And John says it's early in the season because fish spawn in spring, so it's kind of mushy. Fish in hand, fish in the pan. <laughs> oh, look at that go, eh? Shriveled up like a, you know what, in cold water. <laughs> oh, these look well done. Mine look a little bit haggard. I'm gonna be nice and breaded on one side, and then the other side is just, you know. So I've eaten fish roe before, but never from pike. We're gonna try it. Whoa, <laughs> it's still raw and wriggling. Mine is shriveled up, but. It's fishy. It's good though. 7.30, just getting into bed. We had an awesome day today. Caught a bunch of fish. John caught by far the biggest pike of the trip so far. We saw two bear and we really, really made some ground. Feels good to be where we're at, especially because we have some pretty crazy weather coming up in two days. We keep on getting weather forecasts and yeah, it's gonna be like torrential downpours in two days, so. A little apprehensive of that, but feeling pretty good about it today, and uh, yeah, feeling really tired. I'm going to bed. Good night, guys. <sighs> we have <sighs> headwinds today, no matter what, but we're still getting up early. Another early morning for us on day six. We got up just up at 4:30. Uh, a little bit later than yesterday's, but there are winds this morning, unlike yesterday's morning, and uh, it won't make a difference no matter how early we get up today because we have a storm blowing in tomorrow. So the winds this morning are the front of that, and tomorrow we're predicted 70 millimeters of rain, which is uh, not insignificant. We're gonna see how far we can get today. We're not gonna push it too hard because we're both kind of feeling it, and uh, we want to be nice and set up for that uh, biblical flood, flood tomorrow, <laughs> so. John has blessed me with some of his breakfast burrito. John, you legend. <laughs> Today is looking like it's gonna be a short day. Not necessarily an easy one. One hand around the base of the tail. You're supporting the belly. Pike. So I've already decided I'm going single treble hook on my crankbaits, which means I have one or two spare treble hooks in my tackle box, which means that if I take the barbs off the rear treble hook, I'm not fully committing. I could always put fish on one of the other ones on. So we're gonna try barbless and that'll make it so it's easier on the fish. Harder for me to catch them, but okay. easier for me to release them. And I won't be getting caught in my net and making the whole experience a little bit no, that's a crappy. Walleye. Walleye. Woo. We're on St. Raphael Lake, the lake that bears the park's name and the headwinds are as strong as we've seen them. We have a big expanse to cover directly into it. This is a good place to camp. I need some lunch. D 
dehydrated noodles, dehydrated ground beef, dehydrated onions, dehydrated corn, dehydrated broccoli, dehydrated mushrooms, dehydrated Alfredo. A little salt and a little pepper. Oh yeah. Yeah, buddy. That's so good. I was really worried that because I dehydrated everything separately that maybe they wouldn't hydrate well together uh, after mixing them. But yeah, no, it took no time. It's really good. As opposed to pre-making a chicken Alfredo at home, by separating all the ingredients, it's more like a choose your own adventure. I like to think that I was being smart when I did this. I was just being lazy. John, it's getting a little popcorn going. Whoa! Blowing the lid off this thing. Oh my god. But you don't like popcorn. Oh, it's good. Still popcorn though. <laughs> it's all rock here underneath. Right, eh? We're up to 78 millimeters. 78 millimeters. Starting at 1 a.m. We have a huge storm coming starting tonight at 1 a.m up to 70 millimeters of rain pounding through the night all day tomorrow into the night so i need to get a awning going near my shelter so i can cook food and be a little bit dry if i want to do anything outside my tent tomorrow morning so i can really feel the storm brewing the winds are relentless so my paddle is a Fisherman Kayaks paddle, and it has this little cutout here. And my guess is for getting your fishing line out of trees, if it ever were to get it's stuck, right or uh, helping you retrieve your line. Anyways, it works perfect for this setup right now. I just checked the weather again on the Zolio, and we're up to 87 millimeters of rain in the forecast for tomorrow. Yeah. That's not good. Whoa. That's a <laughs> that's, lot. That's the biggest rain forecast I've ever seen for one day. Wow. Great day today. Heavy headwinds. Found a beautiful spot to camp. Anticipating that rainstorm later tonight. Uh, just after 8.30. I'll probably be waking up pretty soon once the storm hits. That's for sure. But for now, I'm gonna try to get some sleep. And we'll see what that storm's like in the morning. Good night. It was a pretty good storm last night. It's calmed down a little bit, but it should be up all day. So it's around 9.30, we just checked the forecast again. It's gonna be raining all day. It's really hard to tell how much rain we're gonna get. Last night it said it was gonna be a lot. This morning mine said it was gonna be just a little. Currently it's like in the between. So we're tired of waiting around. We wanna keep moving forward. So we're gonna pack up and we're gonna get out of here it's gonna be a wet day but so be it both john and i grow tired of sitting around so onward so we decided to pack up get back on the water and sure enough as soon as we get on the water it's calm and it's peaceful and it's probably the most peaceful it's been on this entire trip so far big walleye whoa he doesn't want to get in the basket he's like that's not for me Nice, awesome. Nice fish. That's a good fish. Bloop. Uh, it's raining pretty hard for the last 45 minutes and I'm going 
pretty cold. Oh, and yeah. this rain suit is only doing so much to keep the water out. It's penetrating my wrist, down my back. Um, and it's just sat completely saturating me. So we're going to paddle pretty hard until we find a nice place to camp at the end of this lake. Yeah, because it would just suck to uh, get hypothermia. We're going to set up camp pretty soon. We're uh, well, Hopefully this is a good spot to set up camp because rain suit is inadequate. Woo, okay, we found a nice little campsite here. This is the last one that's available on this lake. I'm absolutely freezing, so we're gonna get a nice campsite set up. I'm gonna set up right here on this rock. This seems to be the only flat spot. Everything else in the back there is not so good. I'm cold. Woo. There goes the uh, middle retaining strap for my D&D hammock tarp finally went. It's been going for a bit. It's a bummer because it's obviously one of the most useful bits on the tarp. I feel so much better having the tarp set up and my tent set up. I was getting really cold for a while. I'm still pretty cold. I need to change like immediately. I'm just gonna eat a bit of food and get into some dry clothes. Soaked. Pants are drenched. Oh, pretty dry up here, but I'm wet and I'm cold. So I'm gonna change. I guess there's nothing much more to it than that. Ooh. <laughs> Getting into some dry clothes. My goodness, that's. I almost like like being cold and wet just so when you become warm and dry it feels like that feeling is unmatched by anything <sighs> victory I was saving these for a rainy day. Chicken Alfredo, Rolo hot chocolate. Here's our site. Obviously the storms died down quite a bit, which is, oh, thank goodness. I was getting soaked. John's back here. I'm not gonna venture back there because I'm in my dry clothes and I'm being a sis, but there's John rocking his awesome wetsuit. Yeah, pay for itself today. No kidding. That is a for sure purchase for me. It's okay. Not really very good at all, actually. Ooh, that's hot. That, however, that's really good. The forecast called for rain, and sure enough, it rained a lot. A lot of rain today. The forecast also called for tailwinds, which we want to take advantage of today. So we got in the water, we put in, and I knew I was going to get wet, 
we were a little lucky at first when it was quite clear and calm. Um, but then the rain came and the tailwinds came and my rain gear was quite inadequate. I wanted to save my sweaters, just these two that I have on, just a thin running sweater and this slightly thicker sweater. Uh, I wanted them to be dry so I kept them off my body and it was a good call because um, by the end of our paddling day I was completely soaked below all my rain gear. Um, obviously the dry suit is the right call in, in this situation and that's something I'll invest in in the future. John's got that right for sure because out there I was quite cold and wet. Not to the point of it being dangerous, just to the point of it being uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable. And we're making good miles, we're covering a lot of kilometers, so um, we're, we're in a good position for this trip to be able to uh, take this day off. I know John's like I am though, it's kind of hard to just sit around, so it's always fun to get on the water and set up camp, so happy we at, we at least moved and made some ground. As, uh, as little a distance we made today, it was still a good day. I was up at 5 to like 6.30. The... Did you get a fire going? Yeah. What luxury. Some bask in the radiance. Pretty nice out, like there's some blue in the sky. What? Yeah, I woke up, I got a weather report. Looks great, man. Looks really good. Oh, it's so nice to be dry. This is a very, very hopeful, hopeful looking day. Best part of the day, changing out of my dry, warm clothes into my cold, wet, soggy clothes. Ooh. It's five after a quarter after nine, getting out back on the water. Crisp day, but a calm day with some tailwinds. In order to catch the fish, you have to become the fish. Okay, that's a good guy. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh my god, the hook came out. <laughs> that guy was huge! That was probably bigger than your last biggest one, right? Maybe! The hook came out and then he was just laying there and I scoop him, but he wouldn't fit in the net. Dang so <laughs> That's so funny. Oh man. Wow! 325 meter portage into Vincent Lake and I think our only portage for the day. So I broke my Scotty fishing trolling setup. The clamp that connects to the gunnel snapped as I was trying to feed my canoe over top of that log. So I have to come up with some sort of solution. This is the calmest it's been on the entire trip so far. Sorry buddy. Hey, you got a nice dinner. So this is my first time flying a pike and I'm going to cut here to remove the back meat. Stop there. And I'm gonna find the Y bones. Good size guy. Something was in there. 
and then come up right behind the fin. Yeah, but yeah. that's not that part. Kind of not great, but no, it's I think good. I started it's a perfect. little early here. So just make a, like an incision along that, and then basically work along it like you would for a rib cage. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you skin a pike. Man, that's interesting. I've never seen it as one fillet. Yeah, well, it's like got it. it's got these dorsal fins on, so I gotta <laughs> cut those up. But you can make it into a pike hat. <laughs> All the rage in Europe. Oh yeah. See ya. Uh, I'm just gonna chop these up into random sizes because they're all kind of stringy. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> for the pole. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, baby, I've been waiting for you. Oh, baby, when you taste like that. You make my tummy go wild. <laughs> so I'm sleeping here tonight, all good. A little bit of a slant. Got the flex kit set up. All is good, but there's a little bit of an issue. John is setting up his sleeping pad, his hammock, right beside me. <sighs> I don't know what to do. It's gonna be a restless night with. Fight, fight! 4.30, we've been paddling. God, oh, since like 7.30. Good day of paddling. Decent fishing, and we're just pulling up to our campsite now. And when you start a trip like this, a 14 day trip, and for some 14 days might not be a long trip, and others might be very long trip. To me, this is a, the longest trip I've, longest canoe trip I've ever been on. I mean, here we are on day nine, and at the beginning I thought, you know, 14 days is like an infinitely long trip. And uh, yeah, it's weird to be at this point. I've loved every moment. Sad to be on the back end of it, that's for sure. Tonight I'm gonna make polenta, I'm gonna rehydrate this dehydrated chicken, and I'm gonna mix it with gravy, with some other things, like broccoli and dehydrated onions and corn. We'll see how that goes. Ah! Oh, are you okay? Did you pinch your finger or something? Oh no. You burnt it? It's a hot rock. Shit, dude. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's gonna blister. Oh, damn, man. Look at that. Like instantly. Mm, yeah, keep your yeah. for a while. Ooh, that was a that was a shock. I thought it was on the outside, but evidently I am wrong. Ooh, that's like to hurt. It makes you feel any better I got it on camera. Did you? Yeah. It does. <laughs> That looks pretty darn dang good. I'm gonna put some Parmesan in it. Mm -hmm. Dehydrated pressure cooked chicken. 
with dehydrated onions and dehydrated broccoli. Dehydrated corn. And honestly, the dehydrated canned corn by itself is pretty freaking good. Little snack. Oh, I like it. I'm always impressed at how nicely that broccoli rehydrates. The chicken's already tasting great. I might add a bit more water and then add the gravy. Or I might do Alfredo. That is my last Alfredo. And that makes me Alfredo. <laughs> gravy mix. I'm just gonna. Honestly, let's call that done. That looks good by itself, but I have all that plenty to eat with it. Uh, <laughs> I just want to be like you. I don't know. It's great. Mmm, plenty. Mmm. Yeah, that'll play. That'll play. This is enough food for both me and John. You want to try this? Yeah. When in Rome. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's all right. Like a casserole. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think I was going to finish it. Pretty good. Pretty like camp food, you know? 7.30, so sun's down, which means that we're going down into our beds. Good day. Ready for the next one. Yeah. Those raw wolves, they sound like they're very close. They must have got a kill or something. All sweet dreams. Day 10. Those wolves last night were incredible. There's such coincidences that occur in nature. Like the fact that when the moon eclipses the sun, they're the exact same size in the sky. Like what is that? It's wild. Whoa. What, does it feel heavy? Yeah. It says, pike. Oh, poor guy. He broke the lip off my thing and the lip's still attached to my line, but he has the hook still in his mouth and he's gone. Oh. Damn, poor guy. It was barbless though, right? What? It was barbless? It was barbless, yeah. yeah it should fall out. Shoot. Check it out. There goes another lure. Shoot. Hopefully he gets that out. Good thing it went barbless though. Today's gonna be a good day. Pigeon! Seem to bend it back pretty good. Yeah, it feels heavy. That's a good size, dude. Just finished a quick 90 meter portage onto this unknown lake. We have about 5K to paddle across this lake till we have to make a decision. There's two routes at that point. One's a 1.6 kilometer long portage. And the other is a series of three portages, about 400 meters each that jump through two smaller lakes. And the series of three portages is our preferred method, but 
the portage route is kind of unknown and lost. So we're gonna go searching for it. If we can find it, we're gonna take that. If not, we're gonna have to take the 1.6 kilometer long portage. If that's the case, the 1.6 kilometer long portage will bring us back towards the cars a lot sooner than we anticipated, which is all right, which is all right. If we can find it, the trip continues. If we can't, just one step closer to getting home. We're looking for broken branches, flags, sawn down trees, any indication of human activity that could indicate a trail. But we can't find the trail. We can't find the trail. Been scouring the shoreline for the last hour. We're well past the point of where it could be, hypothetically, and it's not there. So, uh, plan B, we're on to plan B, and that is the 1.6 kilometer, one mile portage back into Gillisep Lake, which is sending us on our path home. Which means that our proposed 14 day trip is looking to be more like 12 or 13. It's all good. It's all good. I don't want to do dishes. Got some leftovers. Sandra's gonna help me out. <laughs> this isn't making it in the edit. This is this is what I've degenerated to. <laughs> Dishless. I think this is a good spot to turn around and go get my canoe. Okay, we're gonna go a bit further. So, but not much of time. Good spot to stop. Woo! Okay, now back for my other bags. Whoa! Leapfrog! Good haul, man. Take this to the ends, but I'll probably set it down there. <laughs> Leapfrog! Whoa. That's a good feeling. This is truly beautiful in here. I'm so excited to put this canoe down. Okay. crazy that that's done because I was dreading this portage since the beginning of the trip. Woo! Woo we made it, baby! It's okay. Jeez. Moose over there. We didn't see the wolves, but we heard them, they were close to us. Yeah, so woodland caribou, black bear, we heard wolves, we saw a moose, and now we need to see lynx, and that's five out of five big animals in the park. That's crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> Man, you can't beat dry socks and clean underwear. What a feeling. Nice to be here. That was our biggest day by a long shot. We did at least 35K plus that 1.6 kilometer portage, which is just over a mile. Those tailwinds got us going and it's good to be here now because we're both pretty tired. Day of headwinds tomorrow and um, I should guess a little closer to the finish point. It's kind of weird being at this point in the trip where things are winding down. Still enjoying every moment, but we definitely have that homeward bound sense. And I started feeling that today. I think both of us did. It's a good feeling, but a little bit sad.
day 11. I can't believe this trip is coming to an end. When John reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do a two week trip all the way up here at St. Raphael Signature Site, first thing I did was look at it on a map and realize, wow, that's all the way up in the Boreal Forest. I figured this place would be pretty boring. Flat and boring boreal forest, but man, was I ever wrong. There was such a diversity of wildlife and beautiful nature here. From the mushrooms, to the fish, to the Little trees, like and the wildlife. Oh man, the wildlife, the caribou, the moose, the bears. Catching all those fish, eating all those fish, all the awesome campsites we went to. Spending 12 days out here has really been such a treat. I love short trips. I mean, I, I always will because you can only get out so often, you know, so squeezing in a small trip here and there is great. But when you're able to get out and do a long one, you just get to experience so much more and learn so much more. This trip was by far no exception. Being able to spend it out here with somebody like John who's super knowledgeable in fishing and camping and such a good attitude was just such a treat. I learned so much from him about fishing and camping that I can take to my next trips. And the camaraderie between us was just phenomenal. There's always a, a fear that <laughs> when you meet somebody for the first time, and camp with them or travel with them, you might not get along, but we had zero conflict. It was just laughs and smiles and good times this whole time. And we also got to experience a crazy diversity of weather. The headwinds, the tailwinds, the sun, the rain, the hot and the cold. Damn, this trip was awesome. It's sad to go, but it's time to go. Yeah, the Boreal Forest has really left an imprintation on me. I'll be back. There's no doubt about it. I had my doubts that I would enjoy this place, but man, was I ever wrong. So happy I came. What an awesome trip. Day 12. So we're about 500 meters from the pullout, which means this 200 kilometer long journey is over. I hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Have a great day. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. And your low point of the trip? Um, sitting on this bench. <laughs> hearing your and feeling your parts. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good choice. A bit of recency up. bias in there, I think. Um, but, yeah, okay. it's traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> Low point. Um, yeah, it's this moment. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs>